It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And I think that the issue really with TikTok comes down to this. You're swimming in the sewer. That's that's really what it comes down to. Until you've got the algorithm well trained, you're swimming in the sewer. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, the founder of happyfamilies.com.au. Uh, I'm having eyes made at me by my wife and podcast partner, Mrs. Happy Families, Kylie. Uh, I roll. Uh, is it because uh, because of my dashing good looks and the smile I had when I said hello and welcome to the podcast? Was that it? No, it was because you said, tell me when you're ready. <laughs> and then I started talking. <laughs> You didn't give me a chance. Oh, here to. I am with tickets on myself, and it was just because I was <laughs> being annoying. Uh, we need to give you a warning, uh, mums and dads, as we dive into this podcast. Uh, today's content may, well, we're not actually sure where this is going to go precisely, but there is a possibility that there may be some content that is not suitable for young ears. Uh, we may delve into some areas, some conversations that, that you may prefer to only be heard by mature adults. Of course, we may be wrong, but that's where I think this is going because our conversation today is about TikTok. What's wrong with TikTok? <laughs> well, TikTok gets a pretty bad rap, Mrs. Well, Happy Families. Well, I know that you've put a post up recently and yes. it kind of went nuts on social media. Well, and my one wasn't the big one. I, two of my friends, Rebecca Sparrow and Michelle Mitchell, who were both uh, posting about the same thing and their ones really went crazy because they were – They were pretty much saying, get your kids off TikTok. It's horrendous. It's awful. It's horrible. It's no good. It's very bad. And uh, your children will not have their lives improved by TikTok. Hmm. I think you could say that about most social media platforms. Yeah, absolutely. You could. It's not going to improve any of our lives, really. (laughs) I don't think TikTok is an island there. Uh, But but my post was about Channel 10, a news report that they had uh, last week. Uh, Channel 10 reports that TikTok could soon be used for school assessments. Now, that's a headline. I was going to say, it sounds like a headline. They're not going to bring TikTok into the classroom. Well, at least I don't believe that's what's going to happen. What they've basically said is that um, TikTok and Instagram posts could make their way into the classroom, replacing the old-fashioned way of teaching. Deacon Uni has been given nearly half a million bucks by the feds to discover a new way of implementing digital writing into high school classrooms across the nation. So while kids are learning to write 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 word essays, which is great, what the English curriculum may be updated to include is how to develop social media content, how to get complicated concepts across on social media platforms in 60 seconds or less, how to put together a video or how to put together a meme or a blog post or a podcast so that you can communicate a complex idea in a simple way. And TikTok is one of those uh, different forms of media, one of those social media platforms where people do precisely that. So it turned into a big blow up, a big storm. People saying, I'm not going to send my kids to school. I'll homeschool if TikTok becomes part of the curriculum. I don't think TikTok will become part of the curriculum. And I don't think any parent needs to worry about... Hopefully it won't be your famous last words. <laughs> yeah. yeah <I> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to sound really, really naive here because I actually have never used TikTok Yeah. So let's talk all. about TikTok because the news story is, is kind of like a peg for this conversation, but a lot of parents are up in arms about TikTok, including Michelle Mitchell, who is wonderful. And I respect and, and love her and Beck Sparrow, who is just the best. Uh, but they're both saying, let's get away from it. And, and that's your concern. Why is everyone so up in arms? Because in my day, it was VCRs. <laughs> in my day, I love how you said that. <laughs> and and DVDs day. and mm. magazines. Yeah. And now we've just got a, a whole new level of concern for our children. And I recognise that social media and, you know, technology in general is a, a live stream 24-7. I get that. But the reality is our parents had things to worry about that were salacious. Salacious is a good word to describe it. Do you know what was salacious when I was in high school, when I was just about finished high school? I don't know if you remember this song here. This is one of the big things that parents were worried about in the early 1990s. It was rage, video hits. It was music like this from Colour Me Bad that was really getting parents worried about it. I'm kind of reliving my DJ days right now. But do you remember this song and how upset our parents got about this one? Come inside, take off your coat, I'll make you feel at home. Do you remember, the, do you, do you remember where this goes? Do you remember the words to this? <laughs> Let's just say that all video, music videos were banned in my house. I was not allowed to watch them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because they had, so- they had song lyrics like this. 
don't think my mum was so worried about the lyrics. What were they? Well, wor- she what? was very worried about that. Yeah. I think she was worried about the pictures. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, that was so, like you said, so salacious. Because they said things like this. I can't believe I played that. Do you remember that? Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> so, Kylie, your point is exa- exactly right. For decades, there's been something. In fact, before that, I mean, in the 1960s, it was rock and roll. And in the 1920s, there were, there, I'm sure the there was... Beatles, for goodness sake. No, sakes. that was, yeah, the 1960s, not 1920s, yeah. But, but back in the 1800s, I've read some historical stuff about what happened in novels. And novels were the... And, and there was so much stuff that people have been worried about that our youth are going to be corrupted by. And there's evidence that our youth have been corrupted by it in many ways, right? So we're right to be concerned about many of these things. Yeah, I'm not suggesting for a second we turn a blind eye to it, but I am suggesting that there has always been concern. So why is there so much concern about TikTok right now? Because what I see of TikTok is my friends with their kids doing a whole heap of cutesy dance moves. Yes. Well, well, there's a lot more on TikTok than just that. Okay. But, But in the same way that everybody lost the plot when MySpace came out, well, they lost the plot when Facebook came Well, that, out. that came out after MySpace. And everyone said, oh, MySpace was bad enough, but now we've got Facebook. This thing's terrible. And then everyone lost it when Instagram came out. And then everyone was up in arms about Snapchat. I mean, Snapchat was the devil for such a long time. So is it just that each time something new comes on that the old devil just kind of yeah, goes, be- pales into insignificance? Because we're familiar with it and what we're familiar with doesn't scare us nearly as much. Yeah. I mean, there's Tumblr and there's Twitter. Well, how, how much damage has been done by those websites? And there's Reddit and, and now we're dealing with TikTok. And there will be another one in another few years. Well, TikTok's been around for a long time. It has. It used to be music.ly or music. Uh, but it's just sort of expanded and changed. It, it changed completely. So there's a whole lot of things to be worried about with TikTok, but those things are the same with any other platform. When I did that Facebook post about the Channel 10 thing, I, I threw in a quick little aside about TikTok. And I just said this, TikTok is absolutely not for everyone, just like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Tumblr or Snapchat or Instagram or Reddit or any of the other ones are not for everyone. And I would advise a healthy amount of caution in its use, especially for kids and younger teens. In other words, what I'm saying is they shouldn't be on there, but they shouldn't be on any social media platforms. Mm. But saying that a social media platform is outright bad is kind of like saying that visiting a particular country is bad. It really depends on where you stay, who you hang out with and what you get up to while you're there. Well, the TV's bad then. That's exactly right. And visiting the local public library can be bad as well, yeah. Kylie. I mean, do you know what I mean? You, know, you can pick anything and you can find the bad in it. Going to school. TikTok. Going to school is bad. My kids come home. The things they come home from the playground. Yeah. Just conversations. They don't even have to look at a screen. Yeah. I, the internet's bad. Uh, every, everything is bad if you want to look at it that way. Um, TikTok has its fair share of difficulties. Uh, there's a whole lot of TikTok challenges, but there's always been social media challenges. Facebook used to have them. A whole lot of other people have had them as well. And this is what we need to deal with. So after the break, let's talk about what parents can do to make the TikTok experience safer. Imagine a relationship where you felt seen, heard, and valued. One where, as your partner enters the front door, they see you and their eyes light up. A relationship like that is a gift. If you don't have it now, you can. The Happy Families webinar, Better Together, gives you the insight, tools, and support you need to have a happier relationship. Available now at the Happy Families web shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And I'm wondering... Let's do some answers. I'd really like some answers. About TikTok. Because right now, I don't actually understand what all the fuss is about. It's about people being paranoid because they don't understand something. And it's the, the reality is when you get onto TikTok, it puts content in front of you uh, that is popular. And a lot of the popular content is coarse and vulgar and explicit and hard to take. And the algorithm is sophisticated in that what you like and what you dismiss, uh, it, it will learn what your tastes and preferences are and it will bring that stuff in and exclude the other stuff. So it, within a couple of weeks of using TikTok, Kylie, your feed would probably be full of rainbows and unicorns and it'll be full well, of... Well, no, it would be full of interiors. Interiors yeah. and flowers and all of the beautiful things that life Seascapes. has to offer. I mean, I jumped onto TikTok just the other week. I was doing a pre- presentation for 550 year 11 students at Mansfield State High School. We were talking about anxiety. Now, the reality is that probably about 100 of those kids in that room uh, would have found what I was talking about specific to them and their needs. Most kids at that age are not dealing with any major anxiety issues, but that was the topic I was given and that's what they wanted to hear about. So when I did that presentation, 
I needed to find a way to make it relevant. And I got onto TikTok and I found some amazingly great content around mental health, well-being, anxiety. And as soon as I played those TikToks, great content communicated concisely in a fun and creative way by the content creators. And those year 11 students loved what I was sharing because it came from TikTok. Like they were just so in it. They, they really, really enjoyed it. TikTok's full of amazing content, but I, and I'm not going to be a defender of it. It's also full of filth. Like literally stuff, not just, it's not just not for kids. It's not for human consumption, some of the stuff. And I can't believe that people really create it. So if you're a parent and your kids want to be on TikTok, here are my um, my main ideas. Do these ideas flow over into any social media platform? Yeah, or? yeah they do. Yeah, they're not TikTok specific because TikTok isn't really anything particularly new or particularly different. It's just a new way of doing social media. So obviously having children for quite some time now and having them go through different stages, yes. there has been different social media platforms available and yeah. popular yep. at different stages of each of our children's lives. And we've had to go through this process a number of times. It's exhausting. It is so exhausting. So how do we as parents help our children to navigate this safely? Because the reality is we are not going to be looking over their shoulder 24-7. No, no, that's right. And, and by the way, there are a lot of parents who say, oh, I'm just not going to let them use it. And with, with kindness, my response is good luck with that because you might not let them use it, but they'll still find a way to download it onto their device and then they'll delete it before they come home and then they'll download it again tomorrow and delete it. That, 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 that's the daily thing that they'll do. And if you've got a way of getting around that, they'll watch it on their friend's device or they'll have an account somewhere else or they'll have the account that you see and then the account that they've really got. These are not high-tech, sophisticated ways of getting around it. That's just what they do. So here's what we need to do. Number one, no social media for kids that are underage. Now, I know I've just said that they'll find a way and if they really want to, they will. But the good news is while your kids are under about 12 or 13, they usually tend to be pretty compliant. They're usually pretty willing to go along with what you say as a parent. They're usually willing, reasonably willing to toe the line. They are still scared of mum or dad or parent or caregiver saying, that's it, I've had enough. Uh, that's not allowed and I won't accept it. They're like they, they kind of toe the line, but once they get into their early teens, high school, you lose that leverage. So second thing is be involved, actively involved, have the conversations, monitor, converse. The other day I did this thing with our, th- uh, sorry, our 14-year-old and our 18-year-old. Uh, I invited them into the bedroom one at a time and said, hey, uh, next 30 minutes, ask me anything. Like on Instagram, they do. The, a lot of people will do an ask me anything or on Facebook. They'll just say, hey, I'm here. I'm doing a live. Ask me anything. And then they reply to all the comments or they do a, a story or whatever it is as a result of it. But I decided to do a face-to-face ask me anything with the kids one-on-one. And this is an opportunity to say, ask me anything about social media. Ask me anything about morality or alcohol and other drugs or ask me anything about this or that. And it was great to just have an ask me anything with them. And let them ask those questions. Be involved, though, by monitoring, by looking over their shoulder, by having the conversations and saying, hey, guess what? I know that you're 15, but TikTok is a place that has real concerns for me. And so as a result, what can I do to make sure that you're safe? How are we going to work out a way that I can be actively involved in the monitoring of your account from time to time so that I know that you're not listening to song lyrics that talk about, I'm not going to directly quote this, but for parents who do not know, the, the, the soundtracks that people put over their TikToks and over their Instagram reels and over their Facebook uh, reels, th- there are songs about oral sex. There are songs about all kinds of explicit, intimate penetration that just don't belong in the minds of children. Full stop, end of story. And so as parents, we've got to be monitoring and be involved and be having the conversations and going over that. Uh, my third thing is that set the, um, set the settings to private. Um, TikTok is known as soon as you open up an account to have a default that everything is public, everything goes out to the public. So change that default setting to private. Contact from strangers is common on TikTok and you've got to change those settings there. Uh, like I said, talk to your kids about explicit content, talk to them about taking risks. Like, So there's a lot of challenges that happen on TikTok. Challenges are all the go. You, know, you talked about the dancers. The dancers are kind of a challenge. There are other challenges as well. Some recent ones uh, that I uh, have either seen or heard of was uh, there was one that was called the back cracking challenge where, where they just film each other cracking the back of their friend. Like they've got no training. They've got no way of knowing if they're going to do any kind of significant harm, but they just grab their friend and crack their back just because they're so strong and because it's so funny. Uh, Not a great idea. There's the nutmeg challenge. 
The I'm, nut- I'm guessing they've got to eat a spoonful of nutmeg. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. You stick a whole lot of nutmeg down your gob, swallow it. Uh, it I mean, it, 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 it's been shown to affect the nervous system. It can cause hallucinations. It can cause dizziness and nausea <laughs> and dry mouth, obviously. Can you imagine eating all that nutmeg? And it can even cause seizures and confusion. So it's a really dangerous thing, but it was a challenge that was done on TikTok. And so there are real safety issues. There was the full wax <laughs> I got that wrong. The full face wax. I missed the word. The full face wax challenge. Oh, I did see that one. Yeah. Was that actually a thing? Yeah, yeah. That was a challenge. So, so they put it on there as a skincare routine where they cover their entire face with wax. Um, and I mean, there's there's real risks associated with that, not to mention the pain that it can inflict. Can you imagine waxing your whole face? Yeah, I watched this guy who had a beard. <laughs> yes. That's nuts. Um, and there's a whole lot of other challenges as well that happen as well. So you want to talk to your kids about risk-taking and reporting. They need to know how to report stuff that's unsafe, bullying, harassment, sexual, explicit, all that sort of stuff. And most people don't. Most people think that it's par for the course. And I think that the issue really with TikTok comes down to this. You're swimming in the sewer. That's that's really what it comes down to. Until you've got the algorithm well-trained, you're swimming in the sewer. And it takes a couple of weeks to train the algorithm, a couple of weeks of an hour a day using it. There are some people who use it more than that and still don't get the algorithm trained completely because the algorithm always throws something up as a curveball just to check, are you interested in this? This is hot. This is popular right now. And sometimes the most hot, most popular stuff is really coarse, really explicit, really vulgar, and yet it still pops up because even if you don't have anything like that in your feed, it's hot and popular, so we just wanted to check. So what I'm really hearing from you is just the same conversation that we have over and over again. We, yeah. we need to be in our children's lives. We need to be having those conversations with them and we need to be kind of checking up, basically. It's the same conversation that we were having in the 1980s and 1990s about what the kids were watching on their VCR yeah. or on vi- video hits. It's the same conversation we were having when Facebook was a thing and no parents were using it, only the kids were using it. It's the same conversation we were having when only children were using Snapchat and Instagram and adults weren't. And what happens is all of the adults get used to it and start to use it and the kids are like, hey, we don't want to be here. This is where all the grown-ups yeah, are. Okay. So they go to the next thing. That's, that's all that's happening and TikTok is the next thing. And, of course, the, the developers of these apps keep on coming up with something unique, something a little bit different, just a, a little bit of a tweak on the last thing to make this new, novel, hot, cool, fun, interesting. And that's where the kids go. And all the grown-ups sit around and say, oh, my goodness, it's terrible. It's this, it's that. And you know what? They're right every single time. Like those music clips, the song that I played before, it's explicit. It's not content that's for kids. In fact, often it's not even content that's for teenagers. And it's the same with MySpace and Facebook and Instagram. And we can go through the whole social media history. The stuff that's there is not for kids. And TikTok is no different. Our job as parents, therefore, is to work with our kids to keep them safe. That's the take-home message. Full stop, end of story. And by the way, there'll be another new app just in time for our next daughter, who is currently eight, to enter her teens so that we can freak out about that one as well. Well, I'm not sure if everyone's going to have any warm fuzzies after today's no, conversation. No, it's, it's, it's not a comforting conversation. Like, I, I'm, I'm actually getting a little oh, bit a little bit I'm revved feeling, up about it. I'm feeling your heat it's, right now. It's not a comfortable conversation, but I can't say this clearly enough, banning it won't work. The kids will just get sneaky. I agree they, wholeheartedly. They, they will. Now, now we, we do ban our kids from it until they get to a certain age. And once they get to that age, we say, you know what? We've asked you not to do it for this long. We now know that you're at a point where you can do whatever you want without us knowing. And therefore, let's have the conversation. We still want to discourage it. We don't want you to do it. We're going to keep you away from it for as long as we can. But if you're going to have it, we've got to have the conversation. And that's where parents ultimately have to get to. Well, hopefully you found something that's been helpful well, out of today's conversation. Yeah, helpful. Probably discouraging, but helpful. That's, that's the aim of the conversation. Uh, Kylie, thanks for asking the questions. And thanks for admitting that you don't know much about it. I'm kind of glad that you don't because life's life's better than TikTok let's be honest the Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media Craig Bruce is our executive producer and tomorrow I'll do better tomorrow it's the podcast where we dive into the week that was and find what worked and what didn't we really look forward to you joining us tomorrow for that conversation on the Happy Families podcast Happy Families